Hello, my name is Larry Borowski from Green Slate and Company. Today we're going to be talking about our recess TIR gauge used to measure recess concentricity as well as concentricity of heads. Standard with this gauge is a cone element which fits all size of recesses. Also, you'll see in front of you 11 different size collets. So it comes standard with 11 collets related to the size of fastener, fasteners that you're going to be testing. We have a movable tailstock, moves back and forth, with an indicator with a TIR function, that's total indicator runout. We also have a spin fixture on the other end, which allows us to rotate our fastener 360 degrees. Studies have shown that we yield a 9.23 um, gauge R and R on this, and we also have other features that this is used for. For instance, this element is for measuring hex concentricity. This element is used for measuring slot concentricity. In addition to the recess, we can also remove those individual elements and go right directly to head concentricity. Today we're going to start with our recess concentricity cone. First thing you want to do with all these elements is you want to make sure that there's a light coating of oil on the back. So just rub a little bit of oil on there. And then we move this indicator stem out of the way, place it into position. Next, we obtain the fastener that we're going to be checking. We pick the proper size collet that it's going to fit into. There's a groove in the collet, just like any standard 5C collet. Rotate until it finds the, the pin, place it in there. We make sure that the, the fastener is sticking out at least one times the diameter. And we, there's this little pin here that we push in to prevent rotation so that we can tighten our fastener into position. We tighten it till that's in there. We can then remove the pin which allows us to rotate. We move our tailstock into position and we center the cone in our recess. We place a little bit more pressure on it so that we have our spring is actually forcing the cone into the recess and we tighten our thumb screw down to hold it all into position. At this time, we want to make sure that our indicator is in the proper mode. It's a TIR indicator, which means total indicator runout again. So in order to do that, if it's not already in there, we have to press mode four different times until we see the TIR flashing on the top of the screen. At that point, we can hit the preset set button, which accepts that mode. Now we are in TIR mode. In order to zero out the indicator where it is right now, we just hit the preset set button once, and everything goes to zero. And at this time, we can rotate. We rotate our spindle, we actually do three times in the counterclockwise direction, and then we can go around and do three times in the counterclockwise direction. What this gives you is a good average reading, and the, re and the TIR takes your highest. Once you do it once, you just want to do it a couple more times to make sure that you're getting consistent results. Like I said, we have a gauge R&R &R of 9.23 on this, so you're, you should be fairly consistent between trials. The next fastener that we want to try to measure concentricity on is going to be our hex, our hex head. So we already got, we're already set up for our recess, so in order to break this down really quick, I'll show you how that works. We, un, we undo our thumb screw, which removes, releases the pressure. We back that off. We slide our pin back into our 
indexing wheel and we go rotate until this comes loose. And we obviously can't stick a cone into a hex, so we need our other hex element. These are real simple to change out. You just lift the indicator plunger, you pick that up, and it's got a shoulder bolt in there that keeps it in place. So remove that. Again, we've already oiled up our back. We place this one into position and it's changed out for the next fastener. So now we have to find out which collet best supports our fastener being measured. And again, we've got the slot that lines up. We place that into position. We stick out approximately one times the diameter. We tighten her down. So it doesn't move anymore. We back out our stop pin. It gives us the ability to rotate. We loosen our tailstock. We move it up into position, aligning the head with the hex. We put some extra pressure on there to make sure it seats properly. Tighten everything down. Once again, we hit our preset set button so that our indicator is zeroed and we take our 360 degrees around three times and then we just back it up doing the same thing. Once that's done the TIR function measures the highest it's the total indicator runout, so it measures your highest value, plus and minus. And in this case, it's 0043. Our concentricity is actually half of that, which I forgot to mention in the first portion on recess. So whatever the indicator says as far as TIR function goes, concentricity is half of that. That's how we measure the concentricity of a hex head. Okay, our third feature that we can measure with this is for slotted fasteners. We have a little like um, a wedge. It goes in the same way. Place it into position. We move our tailstock up and we align the wedge with the slot. Put some extra pressure on there. Tighten it down. Now this is where it differs a little bit. We actually place the, the indicator in regular reading mode. To do that, we just press and hold the mode button. It gets into regular reading mode. Um, we want to rotate on all these slot elements. There is a little line that's set up on there. So we want to rotate until that line is under the indicator. At that point, we want to hit our preset set button so that we're at zero. And just to make sure everything's settled in, you want to rotate it 360 degrees back to that spot. Make sure that everything is, is seated properly. We zero if necessary. Then what you want to do is you want to pull this back to release the pressure. Rotate your part 180 degrees. Position this back into the slot and kind of hand tune it in there. And then once again, just rotate around so it settles into position back to our scribed line on the edge. And once again, we get a reading 0076, which is our, our concentricity of our slot because we are out of TIR mode. The last feature that we can check using our recess TIR gauge is to completely remove our elements all together and check the concentricity of the head to the OD or the shank. So in order to do that, like I said, we remove that. We may need players to remove our point. 
We remove the existing point, replace it with a slightly longer point, move this up, and at this point we bring slide our tail stock over again. We can raise our indicator, position everything over the top of the head, lock our tail stock back into position. And again, we want to be in TIR mode for this. So we follow the same procedure as last time. Search for the TIR and hit set. And once again, everything's locked into position. We make sure we're unlocked and we rotate. And then again, we do the same thing backwards and we get our average or maximum indicator run out on there. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe or tune in frequently to our YouTube channel to see new and improved videos. You can give us a call at any time, 817-870-8888, or visit our website for additional information. And remember, if you ever have any questions, you can always ask Mr. Measurement.